Okay, so here's a black onyx bracelet that Alfred hands me. I go to see a psychic healer the next day. I didn't even know. I just intuitively knew to just get upstairs. I was walking downtown Toronto, putting stuff in New World Order flyers up, and I could feel this energy around me. Every you know, just it's just dark, and it's 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 evil and it's taunting. So I was just you know there for the bail and and whatever, and just waiting for another three weeks to get you know more legal aid hearing because it still hadn't come in. And I went up to Crystal's uh, place, and I you know I told her this is what I needed. So everything's recorded on those those things. This particular recording is the one from uh, the court one and she had told me the following day because she said you need to stay here for a week. We're going to cleanse your aura. We're going to protect you. We're going to align you and you'll be a totally different person. Only at that point when, she, when um, Crystal started working with me um, did any of the energies, the, the need to want to destroy myself, the need to want to you know, even smoke cigarettes. Everything has been gone because these negative energies cannot attack me. They cannot haunt me. So I have not been able to have any black witchcraft hurled at me because I've been under her protection. Mind you, when they tried, because I was writing the newspaper in detail in March of 2009, I started writing every day because of the war agenda. started coming up more on the videos, the news. Uh, some dark energy attacked my sciatic nerve so much that my leg was under attack. Uh, Crystal was under attack. I was under attack. When I called her to say that I'm being under attack, this is something, this is an aside, don't want to finish this crystal um, uh, stuff, I would call her and she was in pain too. So I was reading the Psalms, uh, uh, save me, O Lord, by a name, vindicate me by your might, uh, strangers are attacking me, ruthless men seek my life, men without regard for, uh, for me, Selah. I had to say that seven times, seven days, journal everything that was coming through my head and then give it to her. She had a white candle for me, which was representation of my spirit, my soul. And uh, so she would work with the big one at her temple, and I would work with uh, my little candle. I'd light it up, and my her healing energy would come through that candle with me 500 kilometers away, which is really cool. I want to learn that kind of stuff. So she had that to cleanse my aura over there. I was getting using the work over here. She also gave me teas and incense and... Um, and um, stuff to bathe in to protect me and plus I got this ring of return bracelet because of the hexing that was going on it's a jade bracelet it's the second one but uh, on February the 11th Cheryl tried to get all her cohort, cohorts in and uh, try to get, have me locked up on being crazy uh, because she knew that she was digging herself deeper into this this uh, this pit of lies so she figured that uh, well we can't reach her uh, Crystal told me on the, on the um, on the audio that uh, she was trying to do this, she couldn't uh, come and attack me, so they made sure that the, the judge had a spell put on him, and so I had to give her $3,200, on top of the uh, about $900 that I had to spend on, on this original ritual in order to de-hex the judge and screw up that whole February 11th situation because that would have been the end of me. I would have been put away, locked up, thrown away the key. And that would have been Cheryl's agenda. But I was pissed off at uh, Alfred for hexing me with this. And then the next day, I had just been there. Um, and I guess I was cleaning something out of my room, threw the garbage in the kitchen garbage. And this this garbage police comes to my door, which is in the, in the noon. Mike, Michael comes downstairs, he goes upstairs, he goes, Dana, there's someone for you at the door. And I come downstairs, and this guy is accusing me of throwing dumping garbage in the parquet. And Alfred does that. He dumps garbage in the park. They had the, the big you know, garbage laws in Toronto that were coming down, and he was stashing it and throwing it in the parquet. Well, my name just happened to be on it. And I guess a couple of weeks ago, the, the guy said that another uh, tenant's name was found in the garbage. Well, that's the household garbage. The household garbage is dumped in the parquet, which I'm not doing the dumping. I'm putting the garbage in the house. So because he found me personally, because he couldn't find the other roommate and stick him with $365 fine, he stuck me with the fine. Meanwhile, Alfred came upstairs and going, what's wrong? What's the commotion? What's the commotion? I had already given him shit for trying the black onyx thing on me and not doing any uh, negotiations while I was gone. And uh, he says, no, I'll handle this. I'll handle this. And then he, and the guy goes, are you going to take the ticket? Are you going to admit that you're guilty? And he goes, no, no, no. 
uh, he was only going to handle it and then I guess perjure himself in, in court to say that you know he was going to fight the ticket because he knew that he was doing the garbage thing. When he said, when the when the cop said, the, the garbage police said that you know you're going to be admitting that you're guilty, you're going to pay for this ticket, he said no. Therefore I got the ticket, I got $365 ticket and I was really ticked now because I'm sick and tired of being taken advantage of. I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm getting the, the life blown out of me here. So. Um, what happens is that uh, I'm pissed off at him. I've got this uh, root canal now. I needed to get a, my wisdom teeth was infected and flared up. I had moved all my stuff, my uh, colloidal silver, my generator stuff, off the floor downstairs in um, his messy basement because I came back to a house which was dirty again and I'm not going to clean it because I don't live here anymore. I'm trying to get this lawsuit done. Alfred's the one who set me up with the Cheryl thing. And so now I have to get this this whole thing done. This is all around his recommendation that I live with Shiva, Cheryl, because I had my cousin, I had other people I could have lived with Rose or other people that I could have bartered better for and been in a better situation. So I'm taking it out on him because he's not helping me with the situation. He's not doing any negotiations. He's sticking me with a $365 garbage fine now. So what happened was um, I left him a couple of voicemails on the phone and I was very angry. I said, you know, I need, I want this settled now. I said, I said, I want to get out of here. I want to go to Costa Rica. I'm pissed off. You guys should have been organizing this. So I left him a probably string of pretty angry messages, which Cheryl used to say that I was crazy uh, in February 11th court. He already knew that he got caught with witchcraft, so maybe he wanted to get out of it. I don't know. But he did mention to Angel that uh, he was plotting against me, and he said, you know, Dane is not stable. I'm not stable. I'm pissed as hell for him trying to do this to me, to try to give me a black onyx ring and um, bracelet to try to hurt me with because I don't need witches around me. I've had enough drama on my own. I just wanted to be left alone. So, and, and these court, this, uh, these criminal charges that were a lie too. So, this is what Cheryl tried to do on February the 11th. After that point, Crystal had told me that, you know, once we get through this, you're home free. And uh, and then she told me that uh, you know God is so great, grace, graceful. He's so merciful that uh, you know he gives people chances over and over again. But uh, it's Cheryl that's going to end up in jail because of the perjuring, the false police reports, wasting the court's time, um, ruining my life, slandering me, uh, trying to stick it to me, to, destroying everybody around her, just to keep her dark secrets safe. Now, uh, remember Lillian showed up, I'm going to go back because Lillian showed up a month later, uh, July the 20, 20th. Uh, she called me, she's saying that uh, Cheryl's going to try to charge her with the insurance fraud and uh, she had a, she was sitting there with a flood in her basement. She showed up um, at my place, which is Alfred's place, uh, in the basement and now um, uh, she needed a place to stay because she came from, I guess, Calgary or Alberta. And uh, from Kijiji, she found this dog sitting job and she thought it'd be a great way to you know, get your feet off the ground and get going. Well, <laughs> she fell for the same thing as I did. So now she needed a place to stay. She was going to charge uh, Cheryl with landlord tenant. I have those filing papers accusing her of insurance fraud and also um, two insurance frauds because she was going to get uh, Raymond to say that the the closet he was fixing in my room was also infected with sewage, but it wasn't. And also having uh, the laptop in the basement, um, using Cheryl's laptop and putting it into um, Lillian's bag, uh, computer bag, saying that it got wet in the flood. Meanwhile, Lillian's stuff was damaged too. So she was a little ticked off. She wanted me to go to landlord tenant court with her. I couldn't because I had a, a do not to come near Cheryl uh, clause. So after that point, um, I helped Lillian move her stuff after she had filled her moving van up at her place. Meanwhile, remember that I have emails showing that Cheryl, I had to have a police escort to get my stuff out on the Saturday. I had about an hour. The police didn't even want to be there. It was about May the 1st, May the 1st 2008, after I had been bailed out of jail. Alfred managed to go pick up my... Um, uh, my car on Thursday night, she only gave him half an hour to get some of my necessities done because I was still in my jail clothes. And uh, on Saturday, I had to get police escort to have a police have me moved out. Um, so what happened was uh, the police didn't want to be there. They said they had murder and other things going on. This is bullshit. I had to leave half my stuff there, pay for a moving van myself. And most of that stuff ended up in Alfred's basement, and we managed to rearrange things around so that uh, 
I could keep it there, and I still keep it there. But I'm going to continue on because I'm running out of time. But we'll get to um, Lillian's wrap-up in the next video. I'm done.